Hey my friends, this week we're going to be talking about dealing with dysfunction during the holidays. Let's keep it real. Uh, the definition of dysfunction is a deviation from the normal. We are all dealing with dysfunction on an almost daily basis because of the pandemic. So if you even aren't dealing with death in your family, you are dealing with dysfunction on one or many levels uh, because of the abnormalities that we've had to fluctuate and go through. So today I'm gonna be giving you several steps to help you get through your dysfunction during the holidays. But before I start, uh, if you are liking what I'm putting out, go ahead and comment. Give me a, a review if you're listening to my podcast. If you're watching my YouTube channel, uh, tell others about it. Subscribe, like, um, hit the notification bell. If you are struggling and you need someone to hold your hand, you can check out my website, CamilleBauer.com, and schedule a 30-minute consult with me. And I do mentoring and coaching to get people to have hope and happiness and grow through um, devastation and loss. So anyway, check those out. Um, but here we go, dealing with dysfunction. As I've focused on the Savior Jesus Christ during my podcast for the month of December, um, I started thinking, oh my gosh, he had to t completely deal with dysfunction all the time. Let's just start with how he was born, right? Can you imagine, you know, who here have, have w got ready to welcome a baby and you're getting all these things ready and you're envisioning what you want it to be like and the king of all kings was in a barn with who knows what on the ground and dirt and animals and how dysfunctional that was right from the beginning. But what great, amazing things he did with his life, irregardless of the dysfunction. And that for me is the jumping off point for the inspiration for this episode. Um, so if you're if you are dealing with dysfunction and you're thinking, why me? And I, I can't move forward and I can't have a life that is uh, satisfactory to me. Think of our Savior Jesus Christ. Think of what he had to go through to push past that dysfunction and his life was anything but typical, um, but we can move through. Okay, here we go. Number one, if you're dealing with dysfunction during the holidays, you got to adapt and that is hard. It is hard to change. It's hard to pivot. You don't want to, right? For me, the last couple years, um, if you followed my story, um, if you followed uh, me on social media, it, it's been hard with the pandemic. My family is very um, close knit, but we haven't been having our traditional get togethers and it's been devastating. So the, just this past Thanksgiving, same thing. Um, we didn't get together, we're rotating. Anyway, and so I had to, last year I was crying in my garage. This year, you know, I, did it and invited others who didn't have a place to go, which helped soften the sting a little bit, but I still cried, like wailed that night. Um, so I get it, I get your dysfunction. Um, so adapt, adapt. Do you have old traditions and you feel like the weight of everything coming down on you? Like, oh my gosh, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to, it's not Christmas if I don't make grandma's recipe of this, if I don't decorate, to the nines like this, take a pause, take a deep breath, and you can let go of old traditions as well as welcome in new traditions. Whether you're dealing with death, whether you're dealing with devastation on other levels, it is okay to, number one, adapt, okay? Remember that. It's okay to let go of old traditions and welcome in new ones. And it doesn't mean you might not ever revisit that old tradition, but this year, right now, it's okay if you don't. It's okay if it's not normal for you, but you're still trying to work through it, okay? Number two, communicate. You might have family that thinks, oh, I'm going to go over there and she's going to have this prepared and he's going to have this prepared just like we used to do. Or um, you need to clearly define and communicate um, your thoughts and expectations with others 
with close loved ones, okay? Um, I know it's hard to share your feelings at times, especially if you're grieving the loss of a loved one around a holiday. It is painful. Like, the holidays are like anything that you don't want to happen, but it's here because it's just another reminder that death does not take a holiday. It makes it, you know, you think the jolly Christmas and, you know, you hear the music, but a lot of times those are triggers for people who are dealing with grief and loss. So if you are that person, communicate your thoughts and expectations with your close loved ones. Let them know, hey, this is where I'm at and I'm not feeling comfortable. Um, I'm not feeling up to doing this, this, or this. So to communicate. Number three, I am telling you, when it's the holidays, we can ride the guilt train all day, every day. Oh, I don't have an elf on the shelf. I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't do this. We could make a list a mile long of all the things we can feel guilty about. But number three is give yourself grace. It's okay if you don't do the elf on the shelf. It's okay if you don't make grandma's Christmas cookies. It's okay if you don't put on the big old spiel that you're normally used to. <coughs> it is okay. <coughs> oh my gosh. It is okay to get a drink when you feel like you're choking. Okay, guys, give yourself grace. I can't say this enough. It, on a day-to-day -day basis, but especially during the holidays when you're dealing with dysfunction, abnormal, um, it's okay. Just give your best and that might look different every day. And that's okay. Don't get discouraged. Uh, remember, if you need to take it half hour by half hour, hour by hour, and you can't think of planning, that's okay. Give, give yourself permission to do that. But communicate, remember the step before, with your family so they know where you're at. Even if, hey, I'm communicating with you. I don't want to, I don't even want to think about it. So I'm not answering any questions because I don't have any answers. That's okay. We could go there. Um, lastly, helping others, number four. And I know that's the last thing you want to think when you're in pain and you're suffering and you're dealing with dysfunction and devastation. But I'm telling you, when you can be a blessing for somebody else, you in turn will be blessed. Um, you will have more hope and an increase of purpose and you will feel better. I'm telling you, um, my example of Thanksgiving, right? Uh, I had to do it all pretty much my you know my now husband is amazing he's been working a lot of hours you know I it was like two days of a ton of cooking and if you watched um my youtube or listened to a couple episodes that I was getting ready and then I put out hey for those of you who don't have a place to go please private message me and I would love to have you so we ended up having three people um deaf separate people not in the same family from different walks of life attend that thanksgiving um this year and it gave me more purpose, like, okay, I'm not doing this just for my little family who probably is not gonna appreciate it and um, complain that they have to help me do the dishes, um, but I'm doing it for others. And it helped soften the burden that I was feeling. I'm not saying that you have to do this, but I'm just giving you an example um, of what I did that helped me and then what I've also shared over the past year and a half as I've been a mentor and a coach, when you can reach out to others, it will in turn come back to you. What you, what you sow, you will reap. And just like it says in the Bible, that is so, that is so true. Uh, but I'm telling you, my Thanksgiving wasn't perfect. Like I said in the beginning, I totally completely welled and cried. You know, I have some fractured family relationships um, going on and it's difficult. It's so hard. Um, it's imperfect, but I'm trying my best. Um, and on that note, let's bring it back to Jesus for the month of his birthday. And remember in Joshua chapter one, verse nine, it says, have not, I commanded thee be strong and of good courage and be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And I have this on my fridge. I wanted to show you if you're watching my YouTube video. 
Um, but it, I just wrote it on some cardstock. I seriously, it's probably been 15 years. <laughs> This is uh, this has been on my fridge, and um, it does remind me because I do get disappointed, and I do, um, you know, we go through those fluctuations in life of dysfunction, and um, through my past, I've I've been able to learn that I am never alone, and even though you might feel like you are, you aren't. Reach out to the Savior Jesus Christ. Pray if you haven't prayed in a long time. He still wants to hear from you and help you and help you get through your dysfunction on the day-to-day. -day. If you need some more hand-holding and some more extra assistance, you can check out my website, CamilleBauer.com, and I would love to possibly mentor or coach you and help you get through your hard. Um, but anyway, I can't wait to talk to you guys next week, and I hope you have a beautiful December, and if it's, if it's dysfunctional right now, know you're not alone, and remember the steps that we talked about today. Have a good day.